What's up, guys? I am here with the Matt Man from the Rise Guys Morning Show. What's up, man? I look like an older version of you. <laughs> Don't give up. Which is the before, which is the after? Oh, my God. <laughs> we do have the same last name, though. That's right. Not. That's right. So, starting out um, in, in radio, I had goals. Yep. My goal was to stay on the radio through my 10-year high school graduation. Yeah. Because I wanted to strut into there <laughs> yeah, being right. Mr. Big Shit. Yeah. We started in January. That was in June. So I, my goal was to last six months. I had a newborn child at home, you know. So, But my, my goals were in the wrong place. Yeah. Like I was sure. wanting to keep a job so I could strut in and show off to people that yep. I didn't like in high school yeah. rather than build something for my child and my family. Sure. So my uh, goals were way out of whack at the beginning. But we had something mm -hmm. there with the show. Oh, yeah. So I, I, my, every time this I... This is like real life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, yeah. from the time I started in radio, I've went from having nothing to whoa and to having nothing to whoa to having nothing to back on my feet again. My show started January 15th, 2003. My child was born January 25th, 2003. 10 days. Wow. So this Is that when the show started? January yeah. 15th, 2003. Because yeah. that was, that was my senior year of high school. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought it was bold. I thought it was before that. Wow. Wow. Okay. So, um, so I, I had to, in other words, I had to check my own ego. Yeah. Because I'm sitting here, okay, what's the, what's the drive for this? Is it to, what's bigger than number one? Okay, do you want to go to Charlotte or Atlanta? But you love this place. Like, can you blow it up out of Greenville? Like, yeah. can you be the first person? Like, I hate to admit, John Boy and Billy did it in Charlotte. Yeah. There was no syndication out of Charlotte. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's more real. I well. Mean, where else are they going to go in the morning to... Sure. And, and, and radio in Greenville to get any type of real conversations. Well, like uh, last week, I took great uh, solace in the fact that we were the only show not talking about the royal wedding. Like, I put it out there. I was like, we're not talking about yeah, it. Yeah. If people want to find out, they can find it elsewhere. I got nothing to say about it. It's a wedding that we're blowing out of proportion, yeah. and I don't care about it. Yeah. So um, sometimes it's good to just to be different because yeah. you, you find out there's a lot of people out there like you and yeah. all the different people come over here and we can yeah. all hang out, you know? Yeah. That's, that To me, that's great. So it's funny. We I just nailed down the date today of the first. We're, gonna cr we're creating a little group, a little meetup group um, called GVO Hustle. It's going to be was something out. We're not sure what the actual name is going to be, but it's going to be like a monthly meeting where a bunch of like-minded people that are just trying to, whether it's social media or branding or marketing, just in general, just trying to level up in life, yeah. are going to meet. I think we're going to do the first one June 30th. Um, start at our so office. That's me. Thank you. This place is chicken. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. So that'll be the first one, June 30th. Okay, cool. um, it's something that we're going to try to do every Enjoy. month. Enjoy. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And then also, we're going to start um, doing like four or five guys just get together, sit around at like a, a round table, whether it's cigars, just sitting around, just having having a drink, or just sitting around, just talking. But have a couple camera angles, just talk about oh, real stuff. Okay. Everything looks great, yes, man. Thank you. Enjoy it. Because it's one thing for to get on camera and sit there and say, I've got five keys to overcoming adversity. Right. And it's another thing to just sit around and have five dudes talk about adversity that yeah. they've been through and that right. they're going through. You know, and that, sure. It's completely different. Uh, so that'd be one thing I'd love to plug you into. But, man, one thing I'll tell you is, like, hearing your story and hearing what's going on as of even the as of recent, recent, like, to me, and this may be just a sick, twisted thing in my brain, like when I hear stuff like that, I get super, super excited because that crap, that stuff, like that's what's going to propel you oh, yeah. beyond anything else. Like I, I, I become thing. crazy. I'm insanely grateful for all the crap that's happened to me and not enough has happened. And like I know that because like you have to have that stuff. You, you know? do. And, and like um, – like Poe Mill. Yeah. That is where I was born and raised. Yep. It is a, a textile mill here in Greenville. Mm -hmm. My house where I was born and raised was demolished because it was uh, it was it was awful. Yeah. Uh, but man, I, I tell you, and you know, I think everybody wants to have a story, mm -hmm. but like when when you can sit back and you didn't realize you had a story, yeah. that's when it all comes down. Yeah. It's like, you know, 
I didn't even realize at the time that I was uh, that my parents were working two and three jobs mm-hmm. to barely get by. You yeah. know, I didn't realize that not everybody else was eating butterflied hot dog weenies yeah. and and cut up potatoes. Mm-hmm. You know, but it. Um, you know, I mentioned to you my father's passing. He ultimately got laid off from a textile mill. Yep. See, back to that pole mill. Yeah. There 25, 26 years. He got uh, laid off. It ended up uh, obviously, uh, you know, uh, changing his life because yep. he goes from working there uh, the whole time that he's raising a family to nothing. So he, he goes and starts his own business. He started a, a janitorial business, which, mm-hmm. again, started very, very small and yep. meek. But before it was over with, he had 11 or 12 employees yeah, and was awesome. just doing payroll. That's awesome. So... You know, when I was in high school, I was very perplexed as to what to do. I wanted, I loved baseball. That's another Gary Vee thing, yeah. is yeah, finding yeah. out that he hustled selling baseball cards. Oh, yeah. I did the same thing. Yeah. Get my dad, before I had a driver's <laughs> license, to drive me to Charlotte and Atlanta to set up selling baseball mm-hmm. cards. Uh, when I was in high school, I was like, okay, what can I, what do I want to do with myself? You know, yeah. it's, it's 17. Yeah. What do you want to do with your life? I was like, well, I love baseball cards. What can I do? I want to do sports marketing. I want to work yeah. for the Atlanta Braves. I'm going to run all the baseball players, right? Yeah. What? So that was my thought. And I was, okay, I want to go and, and intern for the Greenville Braves who were here at the time. Mm-hmm. It was the farm system. Um, I, I call uh, for email. I, I call. I think I actually mailed letters over there trying to get an internship. No response. So I was like, you know what? The hell with this. I'm going to give up. I go to where my dad was working at the textile mill. I told him, I said, I went and filled out an application today. I'm going to get a job where you work, mm-hmm. be a you know, company man like you and do all that. Yep. So I go and uh, I get a call in with a guy named Jimmy Rogers. And Jimmy Rogers interviewed me and um, called me a day or two later and said he didn't have anything for me at the time. Um, I found out years later my dad told him not to hire me. Hmm. So I went a whole summer broke as could be. I didn't have anything because my dad knew that if I went and stuck. got a job there, I'd be stuck for life and I would end up there. And that was another like great lesson mm-hmm. that at the time I had no clue that he was oh, yeah. doing that. So I think that, you know, when I was saying everybody wants a story, mm-hmm. if you kind of look at your life everybody's got one yeah. I mean even the the folks who were you know born with a silver spoon in their mm-hmm. mouth a lot of the adversity they had to get over was proving that yeah. they were a real person who could really go out and oh, do yeah. something you know it's always funny when Gary talks about that Gary's like I've got friends that are depressed and crying because their family gave them everything. So mm-hmm. these are real conversations we have. Mm-hmm. Like they are in depression because they were never told no. And you just look at that and you're like, oh, that is, ah, that's the other side. <laughs> what? I'm getting tongue tied here. That is some <laughs> spicy chicken right This uh, This is really freaking spicy. As Sean said this last weekend, he's like, like all his friends, they'd, they'd start saying stuff like, oh, what do you think you're Tony Robbins? He's like, Tony Robbins helps millions of people a year mm-hmm. and makes millions and millions of dollars a year. That sounds all right. Yeah. Like, that, that right. sounds fine. Like, yes, I'm trying to be Tony Robbins. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's why, like, I mean, I, I get that all the time. Like, anytime you have a paradigm shift like that and you start talking about things that you've never talked about before, mm-hmm. even if you've thought about about them always or maybe you haven't it's it's just people aren't used to it but my biggest thing coming out of that weekend with Sean was that like it doesn't matter what the people think right like you're doing it for you you're not doing it for them and the right people will follow and the right people will really latch on to that but when it's the truth like Gary always says the truth is undefeated like right. it's just it always wins it is what it is like and that's and that's to me when you're when you're focused on putting out a message that's based around just telling your story and telling the truth and there's nothing anyone can say mm-hmm. <laughs> because you're just living out what's what's inside you Do you have some box on yours I'm good thank you very much Can you yes if you're it still working on your if it had not happened good. to me thank you thank you how do you yeah, eat oh, well, well, what's the guess is uh, fortunes Oh, yes. Dude, if, <laughs> if, if the rug had not been snatched up from under me, I would be the biggest dickhead. Like, oh, yeah. I would be I would be a horrible, horrible person. 
so I'm grateful. But you, but yeah, you're grateful, and, and if you look back at it, and you're like, okay, it's not woe is me, or this was somebody this else's is, fault. This is content gold. Oh. All right, so it says, you are a leader. Others soon will need your inspiration. <laughs> I don't like mine. Mine says, <laughs> dance as if no one's watching. <laughs> What's up guys, if you have not yet done so, please like my Facebook page. Then next to the like button, click following, which will bring a drop down. And when it says in the news feed, click see first. This will ensure that you will always see the content that we're pushing out. The last thing that we wanna have happen is for us to put out content that you actually want to see, but you don't. So make sure that you hit see first and we'll see you next time.